Welcome to Mastery Podcast, where we explore the art of living fully, balancing mind, body, spirit, and passion in pursuit of a better world. I am your host, Dr. Sass. Today, we have with us Dr. Alicia Shitanan, a lifestyle medicine physician and founder of Blissful Lifestyle Medicine, PLLC. She is on a mission to improve health through a holistic approach, empowering patients to take their health back into their own hands and helping them reduce medication usage while finding harmony in their lives. Welcome, welcome, Dr. Alicia Shitanan. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's so great to be on here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, um, we're honored to have you. We're honored to have you. Now, Dr. Shitanan, you were in family medicine, yes. right? Yes. And what, what kind of stimulate you to kind of make the shift to what you're doing right now? It's more holistic. Yeah, so I went into family medicine because I wanted to help patients live a healthier life through all ages and help them just guide their journey to explore better health. What I was finding is, well, a couple things. One, by doing that, a lot of times I was not taking care of myself as well. Mm -hmm. And two, I the medical system was not set up in a way that I could truly go to my full potential helping others live their with their optimal wellness. So I decided to look into lifestyle medicine, which is a new branch of medicine. Uh, well, it's not new in the sense is there's now a specialty for it, but it's been around for forever looking into pillars of lifestyle medicine, which are nutrition, physical activity, sleep, social connection, stress management, and avoiding risky substances. And what I find is it's not, it's not, you know, strictly the, put everybody in these boxes, you have to do this, this, and this. It's very flexible with finding how people can live their best lives, I guess, live their best, most healthiest lives. And that's what I've always wanted is to pr improve longevity and quality of life in a way that, you know, fits their own lifestyle, what they want. Nice, nice. And it's, it's really hard, right? When, when you are in the mainstream medical mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that, that there, we, there is a need for that. But in, in an everyday thing, and it's really hard, like you said, to put everybody in the box. Everybody is individual and we are more than just a body, right? Mm -hmm. we, we put all that, the pillars in there and, um, and, and that's what you do. Yes. Um, yes. With, with your practice. Yeah. And I have the utmost respect for everybody, you know, in conventional medicine, it, it's, we, we need that. And I fully believe in, you know, doing it, do, doing things for people that are the healthiest for that are safe for them. So if I'm de-prescribing medicine, I'm doing it safely. I'm not just saying, okay, just go ahead and stop your blood pressure medicine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, we, we have to monitor because everybody responds to lifestyle medicines mm -hmm. differently. And, but that's what, where I find my expertise is so helpful because I can, I can diagnose and I can treat. So some people in like the health and wellness industry, they, they can't diagnose and treat. So, so, and I can, mm -hmm. and it, branching out on my own is, is difficult. I mean, entrepreneurship is difficult. It, it took a lot to take the plunge out this way because it's, it's easier to follow the path that I was always told through medical school and residency. Uh, but it, this is just more fulfilling for me to be able to spend time with my patients, get to the root cause of their symptoms, uh, get get themselves kind of realigned. And I, speaking of realignment, I segue into, <laughs> I, I also do osteopathic manipulation. I'm a DO. So one of the reasons I went to DO school was because it's it, traditionally more holistic. Mm -hmm. So I... It, I, it just lines up with everything that I want to do. Yeah, and and everything that you say right before before that is exactly what lifestyle medicine is about, right? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? I know you you touch on the different pillars. Yeah. So lifestyle medicine is 
for me, it's a it's a partnership with the patient to find what works best for them. So you know, there's nutrition. So finding the lifestyle medicine, we do whole food, plant based, but that. To me, when I first learned about it, it was kind of daunting because I did not grow up whole food, plant-based. I ate a lot of meat, I, but I think it's more avoiding processed foods and then meeting the patient where they are in terms of diet. And not, not everybody responds as well to whole food, plant-based. You have to find what works, but what's, a, what's the healthiest for them. Physical activity, it's recommended to do 150 minutes a week of aerobic, two times a week of resistance exercises. But it, when I was um, like a new mom, was I doing that? No. <laughs> well, I could, you can't do it for six weeks, but even getting back into it, like, and if you're starting, if somebody's at zero minutes a week of exercise, do I want them to like next week to do 150? Mm -hmm. Actually, no, I would like them to gradually get there. It's it's meeting the patients where they are and improving their lifestyle. Some people are like, hey, Dr. C, I, I like, I like to have my wine. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, it's uh, right now it's the holiday season. I, I enjoy like having holiday beverages as well. Like, you know, but it's, it's not completely restricting, but it's slowly, it's slow changes over time that, that makes you healthier, but does it in a way that, you know, is more in line with, you know, your own lifestyle. It's customizable. Like nobody, nobody's the same. No, nobody is. Right. right. <laughs> I, I, I get that. And, and you spend more time with your patient, which we don't get. With, yes. With, oh. with conventional. And, and it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with the physician working in the conventional. It's just the way it is set up. It's so hard. Yeah for you to get that one-on-one -on -one, um, time with, with your doctor and, and you, you give your patient that luxury. And, I and do. Which is much needed, much yep. needed to understand a whole person. Exactly. You need that time. We, we do. And what I was finding in conventional medicine is if I wanted to spend that time, I was having to choose between spending the extra time versus spending time with my family and mm -hmm. that it, like, I am a wife and a mother of two little ones, two and four. So they're, they're quite little. So I, I did not want them to grow up thinking, you know, I want them to know me. I want to spend time with them so that they can grow to be the best person that they can be and give back to the world themselves. And mm -hmm. I, it just was, it was not negotiable for me. And, and I also realized I wasn't, or if I spent time with them, I also was realizing I wasn't, I'd either do that or not be taking care of myself. And, mm -hmm. you know, with my last pregnancy, I, I had a, I mean, I had a life threatening condition at the end of that pregnancy. And I realized, oh my goodness, like I, I'm sitting here negotiating with my <laughs> high risk OB about working more mm -hmm. because you know, that's what we're, what's ingrained in us. Mm -hmm. uh, when I, when I should be paying attention to, you know, you know, the health risk for me and my child, and she had to bring up, this is your, this is your baby. And, and then even then I'm like, oh, I'm doing it for my baby. I'm not mm -hmm. you know, like, you don't, you don't do it for yourself. And she, she told me that she did the same thing when she was pregnant. So I would, I, it's just the, this culture of, not taking care of ourselves that yeah, uh, sacrifice yourself for everybody else that that is right? what we're taught <laughs> exactly. and on the airplane you are taught to put the oxygen mask on yourself yeah. first because if you don't take care of yourself you can't take care of no exactly one. and you as a caregiver as a physician you're taking care of everybody else yep so and you need to take care of yourself first exactly and then once i started doing that which was a little bit later on after I had her and got a little more settled in. Um, I I realized I was actually well. One, I took care of myself. I thought it would take time away from things. I actually got time back because I was more efficient at work. Mm -hmm. I was I had a better relationship with my spouse. 
Uh, so we had less complex, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I had a I had a great relationship with my kids when I took better, better care of myself. I was more present with them and. You know, I, you know, when they would ask me for something, I'd be paying attention more than, mm-hmm. uh, and I wouldn't be focused on, oh, I have to chart, I have to do all these things. Mm-hmm. Um, it, so I, I made sure I was in a better spot for myself before I looked to changing, <laughs> you know, doing a pivot in my career path, because I, I also find you, you if if I had tried to transition then, I would have been, I'm running away from something right. instead of running towards my passion. And um, you you mentioned osteopathic manipulation. Yeah. And, and you do that also at your practice. Can you explain what that means? Yeah, so osteopathic manipulation is a form of hands-on therapy. Uh, I would say it's uh, chiropractic and osteopathy were kind of developed at the same time. We do cracking of the spine like chiropractors do. I personally don't do that too much, just just not my style. Uh, but we do some muscular techniques for muscle relaxation, soft tissue work, similar to uh, you know, PTs will sometimes do some muscular relaxation and joint mobilization to to get muscles to relax and the spine to realign um and then we have kind of our own flair of mm-hmm. things so i i enjoy that i i think it decreases the use of medicines for for pain and i think it improves quality of life for my patients um i also recently got um, after i left my last job i i got my yoga certification. So, so I, I actually put that, started putting that into my manipulation. I will do a meditation if they're open to it. I'll do a meditation right. beforehand. And uh, afterwards, uh, some, some patients, it depends, like I said, it's customizable. Uh, so uh, what I feel they need, I'll give them either some quick yoga moves that I do. Like I have some yoga moves I'll do if I, if I'm like having trouble sleeping. I, I have a couple poses that I'll do um, to help me go to sleep. Um, some people need more strengthening, so I either there's some yoga poses I can give for that. But I but I also have a sports medicine background, so um, fellowship trained in that. So I, I I'll give them a home exercise program or recommend they'll see them to see a physical therapist, mm-hmm. which I have several in the area that I would recommend as well. So yeah. well, thank you for that explanation because a lot of people don't understand what that means. And I even asked you right yesterday, <laughs> I was like, is that the same at chiropractor? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's it's similarities like, for sure, yeah. uh, but there are there are differences. And we do that in addition to our medical training. So it's mm-hmm. just, you know, all all DOs learn it, but I, you know, I I I went into DO school wanting to do it. So I, I've just mm-hmm. continued continued to provide that uh, care. Dr. Shitanand or Dr. C, mm-hmm. right? That that's what your patient know you as. Yep. Um, I that, you mentioned a desire to improve healthcare for mm-hmm. patients. Can you discuss some of the challenges you've observed in modern healthcare and how you're addressing them? Yeah. So uh, I'm actually doing it in a, f- a few different ways. So mm-hmm. I, one of the challenges that I faced uh, as a primary care physician in, in modern healthcare was um, just, I mean, just time. I mean, people don't have time with their doctors and that's not anybody's fault, but it's a system it's issue. System. So, you know, we're so told we need to see more and then so we just have less time for people and less that means less time to get to the root cause so i am getting away from the insurance model um, just because it doesn't it doesn't lend for time if i do an insurance model then i'm going to have to 
see more people in, you know, the same amount of time. So I just don't have the, I won't have the time with the patients that I think they deserve. The other issue is access to care is, is, has become more of an issue. And I, I'm actually, I actually also work as an independent contractor for uh, telehealth companies. And I also offer telehealth uh, to my uh, lifestyle medicine patients. And that is more convenient for patients as long as I have for lifestyle medicine as long as I have a blood pressure and and or and if they can give me some vitals at home then then I I I can do the counseling over mm-hmm. telehealth. It's more convenient. They don't have to drive to my office. They don't have to wait. They get we just connect via telehealth. Uh, and, as an independent contractor, I do see patients that are that can't get into primary care doctors. So they 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 come to me because they're like my primary care is booked out, or I can't book a new primary care appointment because they're not taking people. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I I I think the system needs to change to address that so that we can. We can provide patients access to care. Right, that's that's the big hurdle for <laughs> for us. Um, I think as a country to overcome, you know, it's it's the system and the system been put in place like eons ago, and it, it's not working. It's not. It's, it's not, not. and people, it's just people. People are leaving. Like yeah. I, you know, if I hadn't had so much issues with my pregnancy I, I don't know that i would have i don't know that i would have pivoted or if i if i had um you know not felt the uh, i mean the, just the constraints of the system like mm-hmm. i i might have stayed in primary care and done lifestyle medicine mm-hmm. as a primary care doctor but i i because of how the system is set up it was just impossible for right. me to give the quality of care that i wanted to give and that i i think we need more autonomy to the people providing the care so physicians uh, physician assistants nurse practitioners i think we need more autonomy and i i think we need the system also needs to take better care of everybody involved in healthcare Mm -hmm. because i know you yourself uh, you have a pharmacy background i think pharmacists are worked uh, to burn out um Mm -hmm. nurses respiratory therapists yeah Yeah, there there is a shortage yeah Yeah, there is a shortage and and there's more i know of a lot of people that Mm -hmm. have left the conventional model because they got burnt i mean that's i i I left because of burnout um uh, one of the reasons so and uh, I, it's, I, it's, I was very sad to leave my primary pa- care patients and I, you know, the people I worked with in the office were great, but it just wasn't a good model for, right. for what right. I wanted to do. I understand that perfectly. Now with, with the model that you have, which I'm, I'm sure would work for everybody, mm-hmm. but who do you feel that this lifestyle medicine that you're doing right now would help the most? So I I think I relate most to I, I would say working I relate most to probably working moms because I am a working mom. Um, but really anybody that has feels they're too busy to <laughs> to, <laughs> to take care of themselves, which I guess you could argue would be probably everybody because. Yes. Uh, but anybody that has you know a demanding job or home life or both that that is like hey i how can i take care better care of myself the 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 people that are ready to mm-hmm. make a change but don't want too drastic of a change because i i have I have a lot of tools to help mm-hmm. with that that are you know not time consuming and uh, they, or they can be time consuming if you like but <laughs> if we're limited on time i i have a lot of tools that i've developed I- even for myself and and i do recognize that what worked for me is not going to work for everybody because we're all different but i have a lot of tools to help people overcome obstacles of thinking they don't have enough time for themselves so uh, for instance you can you can take a second to be mindful while you're brushing your teeth. 
like everybody brushes her, but hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I, I brush my yeah, teeth before yeah, I come yeah, in yeah, today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, sometimes I guess for moms with toddlers like mine, it, sometimes they're in the, you know, they're in there while you brush your teeth. But, mm -hmm. but you know, at some point they're going to sleep. If you could take a, like 20 seconds, two minutes to just be present in your body, that helps reduce stress it helps you be more centered uh, so that you can really focus on what is most aligned with what you want to do next so it, is it uh, do i want to work on nutrition do i want to work on physical activity do i just want to feel less stress then mm -hmm. that that's a tool that can that can get mm -hmm. you there and sometimes you cannot well actually you cannot tackle everything and be successful like all at once, right? Oh, yeah. Like you, you usually, on. usually that doesn't work. <laughs> and, and you, as a physician, you probably suggest like, okay, as a physician, and this is what I see, I will tackle this part first, and yep. then after you good with this section, and then we will go to the next and the next. Yep. And I, but I do it based on what they want, so I don't mm -hmm. say unless it's obvious, obvious that they have yeah. to do this first, <laughs> uh, but it's if they're like hey i i feel like i can't focus on nutrition right now i mm -hmm. i would like to i would like to do something to move my body more mm -hmm. then i i i focus more on on that uh, they with me they get a bunch of questionnaires so they can but they can fill that out at their own time so that i can get an idea of what's bothering them the most and then and then co we but we come up with a plan together mm -hmm. and it, it, it i think it just makes it a, more personal mm -hmm. and it makes it so that they're more motivated because i want i want the motivation to come from them i don't want it to come from me saying no you need to do this <laughs> shame on you if you don't do this like the motivation needs to come from within to mm -hmm. make it make it stick and it it's needs to be usually i see the most success with specific like specific small changes that they find that they think are easily attainable and then for me to not have judgment which i don't if they whether they attain them or not so mm -hmm. we you know highlight our successes but if like for instance for me i we had a water leak in our house and i did not i did not exercise that week <laughs> <laughs> because you know why not yeah, yeah, just because yeah, you have water yeah, in your yeah, house yeah. But sometimes <laughs> life gets in the way yeah. and we, we we you know you have to forgive yourself right. in order to to move on it's like okay that week i didn't <laughs> <laughs> and do uh, I don't do too, yeah. a lot of self care, but but the, and that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Sometimes life happens, and mm -hmm. um, it, it's more like a partnership working mm -hmm. with you. Yes, yes. So we're awesome. on the we're on the same level, but I'm here to guide. So, Doctor C, what I know, we talk a lot about different stuff, and I know, and I hope you will know exactly that you're definitely different from other practices. And um, what what else can you touch on that would that actually highlight um, different parts of your practice that's different from other conventional practices? I'm trying to think of what we haven't touched on already because I mean it's it's yeah. time, and I I mean it's mainly the time and getting to the root cause, like mm. having a doctor that is definitely going to listen to you. And I, and then also uh, start my lifestyle medicine practices with a meditation if they're open to it. So, mm -hmm. uh, so having that somebody that's going to help them get grounded, I, I think is important. Uh, I also offer it in my services in several different states. Mm -hmm. um, so I can, I, it's not just, I, I'm located in North Carolina, but I also offer it in uh, California, Colorado. New York, Florida, Michigan, and in the North Carolina, uh, with more pending. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. That, that that's great to know because our viewers are from all over the U.S. and and some in different country, and um, to 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 know that you offer your your services in other state that 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 is awesome. The, the last question: What advice do you have to to give our viewers out there right now? The one thing that they can do. To, to change, to live a healthy life? 
I would say that there's uh, there's several coming to mind, so I'm trying to pick. <laughs> oh, you can, yeah. you can say the several things. It's okay. I, I'm trying to make it easy on you. <laughs> oh, I, I think the thing that helped me the most is listening to how you talk to yourself mm-hmm. in your head and making sure that. I, you know, first is acknowledging how you're talking to yourself and making sure you're not judging mm-hmm. how you how you are living at the current moment. You are doing the best you can at, mm-hmm. at the present moment with the information and life experiences that you've had in the past. So, you know, where, who you are now, that is enough. And but if you want to do you know, anything to improve, then, you know, it, I guess another tip is it's okay to ask for help. Mm-hmm. We think that we have to do everything on our own. I did. I thought yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't need help. I don't uh, yeah, uh, me, yeah, me, me too. Me, like <laughs> years ago. So, uh, yeah, you know? I got this. I don't yep. need, yep. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't need anybody to help me through this. Um, but I found once I asked for help, things just, opened up, you know, in in terms of meeting people that are more aligned with with me um, and just, I mean, feeling better overall. And, you know, sometimes having somebody else with a different perspective can can be like, oh, I didn't I don't know if I would have come. I would probably would have taken me like years to come to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. But you just asked a question to make me think of this a little bit differently. And Sometimes people can see things on the outside that you can't mm-hmm. see. And so it is okay to ask, ask for help in terms of, you know, I guess mental health and also ask for help for things that you need done physically. Like, you know, if you are, um, if there's a lot of dishes to be done, you can ask your spouse to help, you know, things like that. I'm, I'm kind of generalizing, but um, it, it's okay to ask others to do things. You don't have to do everything. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for that advice. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. And, and where can our listeners find you? So, uh, several places. So, I, my website is www.blissfullifestylemedicine.com. Uh, um, that has all my offerings, a way to schedule appointments. I also offer a 30-minute discovery call if you would like to see if lifestyle medicine or if you're local to me, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, um, it, it, osteopathic manipulation, if you want to know if it's a good fit, uh, you can find me there. I am on Instagram. Instagram at Blissful Lifestyle Medicine. You can find me on Facebook as well and LinkedIn. Um, I'm there as yes, well. So thank you. And we'll list all those, um, you know, connections there on the description. Thank you so much, Dr. C, <laughs> for being here. And, and you know, me having the background of healthcare, I'm like, oh, I can talk to it all day yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I want to mention it and, and we literally will be here all day long. But Um, Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor to be here.